To begin to understand how our world is constantly building and destroying itself, we need to understand a theory called the tectonic plate theory. The tectonic plate theory started as an idea from Alfred Wegener in 1912. He noticed that the shapes of the Earth's continents allowed them to fit together into one giant continent, much like a jigsaw puzzle. He called this giant continent Pangaea, which means all lands. He believed that about 300 million years ago, Pangaea began to break apart and the pieces drifted to their present location. Although Wagner's theory was supported by the shapes of the continents, he was unable to explain why they were moving. In 1929, another scientist named Arthur Holmes expanded on Wagner's theory. He proposed that there are thermal currents in the Earth's mantle where hot materials rise to the top of the mantle, cool, and sink back to the lower areas. These cyclical currents, Holmes suggested, were enough to move continents. His theory was largely ignored. It was not until the 1960s that Wagner's and Holmes' ideas were taken more seriously. Humans had begun to study and understand the ocean floor, mid-ocean ridges, island creation, and other natural phenomenon. This new knowledge built on what Wagner and Holmes had believed earlier. We now know that the Earth's crust is constantly moving. There are seven major plates with dozens of smaller plates, and each of these plates sits on the asthenosphere, the molten rock layer of the mantle. As the molten rock shifts and cycles, the plates on its surface are moved. I would like to show you a model of the tectonic movements that the Earth's crust is going through. And for that, we start with two types of plates. We have oceanic plates, which are thinner and more dense. So for oceanic plates, we'll take these fruit roll-ups to represent those. And there are continental plates. And these continental plates are, are bigger, they're thicker, but they're lighter. They're less dense than oceanic plates, so graham crackers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use um, some whipped cream to represent the asthenosphere. I'm going to move my oceanic crust and my continental crust out of the way. Well, there's the asthenosphere. I'll put it down a little bit there. So this is the, uh, the magma that that the crusts are all floating on in the world. We've got, it's, it's, it's liquid, it's molten rock, it's super hot, and the continental plates are floating over top of this asthenosphere. The first type of boundary I'd like to show you is called a divergent boundary. Divergent means that the plates are going to pull apart from each other. So we can show that by using two oceanic plates first. got the oceanic plates, they're right up against each other, the earth's in them, the, the movement of the, the asthenosphere, the molten lava, is causing them to pull apart. Now, continental plates act in much the same way. We've got our graham crackers floating on the asthenosphere. When there is divergent action with those, again, they pull apart. And you can see that there is a bit of a valley left in here. This is a, called a rift valley. The molten lava is usually farther under the surface, under the continents, because they're so thick that molten lava usually won't bubble to the surface and create new crust, but it will create a valley um, uh, deep within it. This concludes the first of two videos in the series. This video introduced you to plate tectonic theory as well as divergent boundaries. The next video will look at convergent and transform boundaries. I hope to see you there.